In this lesson, we'll continue our discussion of the spinal cord by taking a look at the external anatomy of the spinal cord. So we had said in a previous lesson that our spinal cord was uh, encased within three meninges. So once we were to cut those meninges away, we would then see the actual spinal cord. So our spinal cord extends from the level of the foramen magnum. Now, it doesn't go all the way down through the entire spinal canal or the vertebral canal, like into the sacrum. It doesn't go that far. The spinal cord actually ends at the level of L1, L2, somewhere in between you know, the bottom of L1 and the top of L2. It's roughly about three quarters of an inch in diameter, so it's really not that thick. Now, at the bottom, at the end of the spinal cord, it ends as a point or a tapered end, and we call that the conus medullaris. And so if you take a look here at the spinal cord, right about here would be where the foramen magnum is, right? So this would be the beginning of the spinal cord, and you can see it goes right down through the, you know, the cervical spine, it goes through the thoracic spine right here. All right, this is at the lower thoracic spine. And then you can see this little point right here, down and up, right there, down and up. All right, that's between the level of L1 and L2. That tapered end right there is called the conus medullaris, right? It's just like a cone. Now, generally, the shape of the spinal cord, it is cylindrical. However, on the front, it's slightly flat, and also on the back, it's slightly flat. We're going to see that all of the spinal nerves, and there's 31 pair of spinal nerves, they actually emerge from the spinal cord bilaterally. Let's take a look. Okay, so if you take a look here, all of these little yellow areas here, right, all these little lines are the spinal nerves that are coming off. Here on the right side, they're only showing you a little bit of it, and then on the left side, they're, they're extending them out a little bit. So they do happen bilaterally, it's just that the picture is showing you um, again, here they're, they're cut. Over here, they're extending the nerves all the way out. So you would see here, we're going to see there's about, no, not about, there's actually eight cervical nerves right here. There's 12 thoracic nerves right here. They come off of the spinal cord. And then there is going to be five lumbar nerves, five sacral nerves. Now, if you look at the conus medullaris, it's between L1 and L2. But the lumbar and the sacral nerves have to head down to the pelvis, right? They have to head down this way. They go to our, you know, like the external genitalia, the uh, pelvic area, the thigh, the thighs, the legs, that type of thing. So if you notice, the nerve roots here are heading straight down, right? In the thoracic spine, they're kind of heading out to the sides. In the cervical spine, they're heading out to the sides. But in the the, the lumbar nerve roots and the sacral nerve roots, right, they're heading straight down to the pelvis. And again, the reason is the spinal cord ends so high. Okay, so we see, again, spinal nerves that emerge from the spinal cord on both sides bilaterally. Now, there are two enlargements of the, of the spinal cord. One is called the um, cervical enlargement, right here. And then the other one is going to be called the lumbar enlargement. The reason these areas are enlarged, if you take a look right here, the cervical spinal cord is a little bit enlarged. This is where all the nerves come out right here that are going to head down into our upper limbs. Right, we're going to see there's a plexus called the brachial plexus. All of these nerve roots are coming from the lower part of the cervical spinal cord. Hence, it's enlarged. Same thing down here. This part of the spinal cord is enlarged. This is going to give rise to all the nerve roots that are coming from the um, that are coming from the lumbar enlargement and, and going down towards again the pelvis, the external genitalia, the the thighs, you know, the lower leg, and that type of thing. So that's why that we have a lumbar enlargement. It's giving rise to all of those nerve roots. If you take a look at the thoracic spinal cord, it's kind of thin and narrow. That's because we just have these individual thoracic nerves coming off and going in between the ribs. Okay. So that's the cervical enlargement. This is where the brachial plexus emerges. This is, the, again, the nerves that are going to go down into our upper limb. Wrong way. And the lumbar enlargement is where the lumbar and the sacral nerves emerge. Now, 
when the anatomist looked at all these nerve roots coming down, heading towards the sacrum and the pelvis and the, you know, the, the, the lower limbs, they saw that all these fibers resembled the back of a horse. So they decided to call all those nerve roots coming down the corda equina. If you ever took like a bio class, that type of thing, caudal is like the rear end of an animal, right? The caudal end, and then equina is horse. So this is basically saying like the back of the horse or the horse's tail, right? That's what they saw when they saw all of these fibers right here. Okay, so the corda equina, the literal translation is the horse's tail. These are the nerve root fibers that extend from the lower parts of the cord, and they do not exit the indervertebral foramen uh, from the level of origin. And what I mean by that is they have to, instead of these nerve roots coming out and going out here, like to the sides, they have to head down, forming this whole leash of nerve roots. Now, there is another structure that helps to hold the spinal cord in uh, place. In my previous lesson on the, men uh, on the meninges, I had mentioned the denticulate ligaments were lateral extensions of the pia mater to help hold the spinal cord in place. There's another extension of the pia mater that goes down and anchors to the coccyx. This is called the phylum terminale, right? So it actually would begin here, and it's, you know, it's somewhere down in here. It kind of goes through this area, and then down at the bottom here, we see it, right? This, this kind of this little line going down. This is going to anchor to the coccyx. It's called the phylum terminale. The literal translation will be the, you know, the terminal filament, right? The, the end filament, and this is anchoring the spinal cord down. The last two external features that we would see of the spinal cord, um, on the front of the spinal cord, there's a deep groove known as the anterior median fissure. Right? Anterior, we know, means the front. Median is the midline. And if you don't know this, you can jot this down. A fissure is a deep groove, right? So this is a deep indentation located on the anterior spinal cord. In the back of the spinal cord, there's also a groove, but it's not nearly as deep. It is known as the posterior median sulcus. Um, posterior, we know, means back. Median, again, means midline. And then a sulcus is a shallow groove. Okay, so it's not, uh, it's not as deep. So we don't see it on this picture um, too much. You can see, if you kind of look in the middle here, there's a, a line going right down the middle. That would represent like the posterior median sulcus. In um, the next lesson, I will show you um, a better picture of the anterior median fissure. Okay, so that concludes this lesson on the external anatomy of the spinal cord.